Thank you, good afternoon. And uh, yeah, look, my no, <laughs> um, no GPS. Um, that was, that title came um, way back when, when I was first asked to talk about this topic. And I was, I was super excited because um, there was so much going on. And being a technologist um, and a little businessman, um, I just couldn't wait for all this to happen. And well, um, as time went by, uh, we turned more into a deja vu of technology. Um, very little happened in uh, the way of development. It turns out everything takes uh, twice as long as about half the features you're expecting and costs double the money you're, you're planning. Um, so, um, nonetheless, there are still a few technology updates or trends that um, I'm actually am excited about. Uh, many of them have actually happened, some of them are still in the making. Uh, this is one of them, the no hands, all of a manufacturers kind of have it, um, we kind of have it. Um, I will be speaking, uh, well, most of the examples will be coming from um, Service Store, because Service Store we represent. Um, it's more so that we have more insight in, in, um, into the technology that's going on there. That does not mean that other manufacturers don't have that. Some may have even more than one service to have. So whatever. This is what I, what I personally know about, and so I, I thought I'd share some of that with you, and some will be from other manufacturers. Uh, so the, um, the first one is actually more of a, um, a trend made in a technology. Uh, when, I, when I spoke uh, last year and, and showed some of the examples of what's being done in Europe, it was more so that um, kind of every manufacturer had this, this thing, this drone, and it could do a certain things and certain sensors, but it basically was, was up to you, the customer, to figure out what to do with it. And uh, it seems to me that, that at least uh, a good number of manufacturers have not come around and, and um, try to better understand the industry and build and purpose-built turnkey solutions, like this one for, um, specifically for, for the gravity. It's a copter um, that really is geared towards that application. It, it seems kind of trivial, but, but from a manufacturing, from a, from a technology perspective, there's a lot behind it to make sure that the, um, the, the, the camera fits the application, the sensor fits the application, Bellows are matched up, the batteries are matched up, it's easily deployable, flight control can do it, it's easily to, to use, and on and on and on. So, so this is, is one application, or one, one turnkey system that um, can be easily deployed, can be easily used, and, and does this one job, it does it really well. If you want to do something else with it, it becomes difficult. So here's, here's another application that goes more into a, a software bridge, where this is um, uh, a hotspot detection, also a, a specific solution being built around a, a UAS, or sometimes UAS platforms, um, but based on a, a radiometric thermal um, uh, infrared camera with software um, that allows um, the input of a, a threshold for hotspot detection and then when that, that uh, threshold is being uh, reached, it uh, goes in, communicates with the flight control and, and captures the, um, uh, the, the positioning of the aircraft and then at the end kind of uh, generates, or allows it to generate a, a heat map, which then can be used for applications like uh, solar farm hotspot detection, modify hotspot, uh, hotspot detection in the lower left, or the, um, the one on the right is for um, gas pipeline. Um, this is something I'm really excited about. Uh, this again happens to be a service um, drone, uh, military grade aircraft. Uh, there are some other sound that have um, fairly high um, or long duration uh, flight times. Uh, this particular one has just about one hour, which um, configured properly allows you to actually do about 150 acres of, um, of uh, survey in, in, in a, a single flight. Uh, challenge here obviously is uh, battery capacity versus weight, sensors and so forth. Um, but this is shows you that the, the motor orders are coming more and more towards the uh, fixed wing in terms of flight duration and, and coverage. Obviously they will never reach it. 
Um, but given today's uh, regulatory environment of, fish, of um, visual line of sight, this is, this is pretty substantial. Um, if you take that one step further, and all that, that's there today, at least um, the technology is there, I'm not sure how much is there by the way of real application, but you can actually end this, this, uh, this, this um, piece of equipment uh, with uh, precision landing um, sensors and uh, land on a charging pad, uh, sit there for an hour or so, and um, then it's recharged, take off again. Uh, you can take it one step further and go into this uh, story of this drone port. Dimensions a little bit off of whack here, so this one doesn't quite fit in. <laughs> but um, with that kind of setup, you can imagine a uh, surveillance um, application where you push a button and you can have a, um, a drone sitting out there for a long, long time. Or if you have two of them, they come back down and, and um, ultimately come back up. Here's another one, uh, moisture proving. I don't want to say uh, all weather proving or, or water proving, but it's moisture proof to, to, the, to the extent I think that's feasible for practical operations. Um, <clears throat> Again, this is trivial kind of, or it looks trivial. Um, many uh, UI, uh, UAVs have that, but they're, they're typically the smaller ones. This one is a bigger one. It's an example of the bigger ones now getting into providing this capability. Uh, it's, it's quite a challenge technically to actually encapsulate the electronics completely so no moisture and dust can come in. Uh, no, we're dealing with heat dissipation. It's, 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 it's tricky. Then you put a fan in, and once you start blowing the fan, then you realize that your barometric pressure sensor thing is it's not a different um, altitude than what it really is. So you have to deal with uh, quite a bit of challenges. Uh, this one I'm really excited about. Uh, this is the uh, Sony Alpha, um, Alpha 7 R2 that just got released about a week ago. And this is, a, I think, is a really good example of um, sensors getting smaller, um, lighter, cheaper, even though it's not quite cheaper, but it's price performance-wise, it's cheaper than before, uh, and offer higher performance. So with this kind of sensor, which is already integrated, fully integrated, in at least in, in our aircraft, um, it gives you 42 megapixels in a full frame sensor. How, how cool is that? <laughs> which means at, um, at 60 meters or 200 feet, which is sort of the, the limit of the, the blanket core for section 333 extension, it's better than 10 millimeters uh, GSD or about better than half, half an inch GSD. Um, I think that's substantial. The whole thing weighs less than one kilogram with a 28 20, 20 millimeter lens, and it costs about 3200 dollars So imagine what you can do with that. On the uh, sensor side, um, again, kind of same, same old scheme getting lighter, better, cheaper. Um, there's an example of a um, kind of an entry-level uh, lighter solution. Complete system weighs um, uh, two kilograms, a little bit more, operates up to 150 meters, which is sufficient for, for our applications for the most part. Generates a decent um, point cloud, a decent scan angle. Um, and um, a, a 20 watt power consumption is something we can carry on um, at least the bigger uh, UAVs. Um, again, on the sensor side, this is what I was, was hoping to actually show back when I first when was called to, to do this. Um, RTK GNSS, obviously it's around, we know about that. Um, several manufacturers operate. But, but this is one example uh, by Swift Navigation, the Pixie, that I think was announced uh, this summer, not too long ago. 
um, with that um, open source chip, uh, both for the uh, base station as well as for the, uh, the onboard piece. It's, um, it's quite accurate in the sub-centimeter level, uh, low power, um, very small, and it's really, really cheap. Um, although it's still it's only part of an um, integrated solution. Um, it's got some challenges, um, but it's, it's one way to get into a kind of a low cost, um, reasonably accurate, um, well-functioning well um, RTKG that says. And here is another exciting development on the uh, software side too, actually. Um, this, I think, is substantial. Um, Skyward I.O. Uh, just releasing their, their software, I think it was probably a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, and that, to us as, as manufacturers and operators and, and fleet managers, basically, is, again, is substantial because that, well, I should say that there are other applications that run like virtual air balls, it's there. Um, but this is really developed ground now for, for our industry, for the automated aircraft um, systems. And it allows you to, um, to manage the, um, the, the flight operations from an operational perspective, from an employment perspective, as well as from a regulatory perspective. It also shows a, a flight plan in real time with no limbs and, and um, temporary flight restrictions. Um, it, it, it's all there. It's all integrated. And it, it's, it's the next step, um, they even offer a um, APIs for, for uh, manufacturing of fleet, fleet operators like ourselves to, um, to upload our flight plan and have it checked prior to the mission for our regulatory compliance um, in, and then post-flight upload the, the flight telemetry which then could be used for, um, for service and maintenance management and any kind of um, irregularities that happen during the flight. So that, I think that's significant. It shows the direction where this industry is going, where we can really scale up and uh, deploy on a large scale industrial operations. Um, also, the, uh, the FAA uh, recently came out on a um, limited trial basis um, with this um, app. I believe it's only for the, um, for the iPhone at this point. Um, before you fly, and um, it, it shows you as, as an operator out on the field that um, if, if where you are, if it's possible, if it's, if it's, if it's allowed to, to fly in that area under all these different conditions. So pretty much the, the five mile or, or three mile, whatever, depending on whatever regulation you're flying, it will tell you uh, whether it's legal or not. Um, here are a couple of, of um, technologies, and again, your picture is representative. They're not the only ones, there, there's more out there. Um, that goes in the direction of the on visual line of sight um, ADSP, ADSP in and out. Um, there's the uh, Garmin GDL84. Um, it's been around for, for many aircraft for, for quite some time, but what's significant on, on the technology side is that. This has actually been integrated by robotic skies in an unmanned aircraft. It was a fixed main aircraft, it was kind of large, um, but not the global all type. Um, and what's, what's important there is that it is um, an ADS-B sensor or instrument that, is, um, that meets the regulatory requirements by the FAA. So if, if you carry anything that, that's ADS-B or sensor void, um, that's not type specified and recognized by the, by the FAA, it doesn't mean anything at all. I, in fact, we, we know of situations that um, operators carry uh, various instruments, um, transponders and what have you, that were, that were lightweight on, on their UAVs, low power consumption, but the FAA has to take them off because they're not type specified. This particular one is actually uh, um, meets all, all of the regulatory uh, requirements 
Yeah, so it is, it is uh, like like transponder ADS-B and now, so they can fly in um, restricted airspace or controlled airspace that requires these kinds of uh, equipment. Um, next is uh, an example from uh, Sensa. Again, there, there are many others out there, but it's 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 again it's kind of symp uh, symptomatic for this trend: uh, smaller, lighter, cheaper, and, and uh, reasonable, if not better, performers than what's out there. Uh, this is basically a mini uh, laser rangefinder, which is great for um, like a little bit of sense and avoid near range uh, for, uh, for for slow flying aircraft. Um, it's also a, um, a low level altimeter, so if, if you want to fly like uh, along the um, uh, the, um, the terrain, for example, if you do uh, if you carry a magnetic magnetometer. Uh, for, uh, for certain applications, you have to follow the contours of the um, terrain, and with that, you can actually do it. And let's see. That would be that would be the end of my session. A couple more minutes, but um, as I said, it was none less than I expected that it was actually available. So thank you very much.